looking across the fence, a bird's eye view of a fragile but valuable natural resource. We'll discuss the importance of wetlands to our ecological and economic health. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The month of May is National Wetlands Month. It was created more than 20 years ago to draw attention to the importance of wetlands and to educate people about the value of wetlands as a natural resource. In short, it's an opportunity to learn how to protect, preserve and expand these important environmental lands. With us this afternoon is Jim Eikenberry. Jim is wetland specialist with the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service in Colchester. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Why celebrate wetlands? What makes them so important? Well, there's lots of reasons why wetlands are important. The wetlands along our rivers help slow down floodwaters. They can also hold on to a lot of sediment and nutrient pollution. They provide great wildlife habitat and also great fish habitat and great areas for people to connect with wildlife. And um, they also help to keep water tables maintained, which is especially important during droughts. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of reasons to celebrate wetlands. Now I was looking at your website and it referred to wetlands as the kidneys of the landscape. I thought that was pretty great. Yep, they can definitely help you know, cleanse and uh, take care of our water pollution problems. So the stakes are pretty high for both humans and animals. They are, yeah. Wetlands under a lot of pressure. I like to think of them as sort of an underdog type of habitat. And there's a lot of pressure from agricultural use and uh, land clearing and development as well. But, you know, we're seeing this video here and they're home to a wide variety of, of animals and species. Yeah, even though they only cover a small percent of Vermont's landscape, a lot of wildlife use them. Um, muskrats, fish, deer, moose, they're, they're very uh, productive ecosystems. Do you think people really realize that? Um, I think that they're undervalued and that we try to promote the importance of wetlands through our work. Mm -hmm. During the 20th century, is it fair to say that we really didn't treat wetlands very well? Yeah, it's a fair statement, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they have, there's been a lot of wetlands lost throughout our country. Um, some parts of the country have lost even up to 90% of their wetlands, so they're under a lot of pressure. I mean, a lot of people refer to them as swamps, <laughs> yep. but they're important. They really are, yeah. So what's the status of wetlands in Vermont, and how many acres do we have, and how many have been restored? Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that in 1780, we had about 341,000 acres of wetlands. And then in the following 200 years, between you know, 1780 and 1980, we lost over 35% of our wetlands to agricultural conversion. That was 121,000 acres. So we're down to about 220,000 acres of wetlands right now in Vermont. And that's about 3.5% of our 6 million acres in the state. So it's, it's, it's dwindling. Mm -hmm. Are there different kinds of wetlands? There are. There are forested wetlands, which are very common and you'd oftentimes see along rivers. There are freshwater marshes that are more open, uh, scrub shrub areas, and then some very special areas like bogs mm -hmm. and fens and vernal pools. So what kinds of programs and services does the NRCS offer for landowners who have wetlands? Mm -hmm. For private landowners who have agricultural land or former agricultural land that was ditched drained or otherwise land level that was a wetland at some point has been really manipulated and farmed since then. Those folks are eligible for uh, wetland reserve easements through our agricultural conservation easement program. What does that entail? So it entails a conservation easement which would buy the development rights, the agricultural use rights and the vegetation management rights of the land but the person would still own their land. And the wetland restoration itself entails um, kind of undoing what we had done before to plug the ditches, to plug or break the tile drain. If the land had been smoothed out, we'd bring back the pit and mound topography that would be natural in these wetland ecosystems. What are the benefits to the landowners for this? Well, there's financial compensation on a per acre rate. And um, a lot of folks who work with us in the program really enjoy seeing the wildlife back on the land. For them, it's part of their legacy because they're permanently protecting that land and making it something that's great for fish and wildlife habitat and also helping with um, flood resiliency. And so how does a wetland get restored? Um, on the ground, we work with our U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service partners to survey, design, and then implement the restoration itself and work with contractors to get in there and really plug those ditches to make that topography shaped back to what it, it used to look like. And then we restore the native vegetation as well with tree and shrub planting and control invasive plant species as well if needed. And there are benefits too. We were talking earlier a little bit about the mosquito population. Well, 
people think, well, if the land's wet, then it should be perfect breeding ground. But you pointed out that that's a perfect feeding ground. That's right. Uh, a a well-restored wetland that is, is functioning as it should be really is a spot where the native species are gobbling up those mosquitoes. The uh, salamander larvae, the fish that are in the depressions that we helped create, um, dragonfly flies and damselflies are all eating those mosquitoes and helping to control that to natural population levels. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the fish too, there's a benefit to the, the native fish population as well. Yes, um, a lot of our restored wetlands can be nurseries that um, the native fish use. Um, the Pomainville uh, Wildlife Management Area is also restored through our program and they have done a lot of work the state has through looking at fish sampling and found that for northern pike and other fish it's been a great nursery habitat. The floodwaters come up in the spring, the fish go into the depressions, they gobble up mosquitoes and other insects, and then when the next floodwaters come, sometimes even the following year, they go out into the river and continue their life cycle. Which is something that I'm sure anglers love to hear about. Definitely, yeah. It's our wetland restoration pr projects help with a lot of fisheries habitat, in addition to other wildlife habitat and protecting wildlife habitat corridors. Are there other benefits as well? Yeah, um, flood resiliency is a big one. Um, we've Where's seen Irene. <laughs> yes, and even with Irene, there's been areas along the Otter Creek where we have, you know, um, almost a few thousand acres of wetlands restored. That uh, the hydrographs show that those areas, in addition to the natural wetlands that were there, help slow down the flood waters. So that you know the the flood waters were high in Rutland, but by the time it got to Middlebury, they'd actually slowed down instead of actually increased what you would normally see in a river system as the water goes down. Stream. Mm -hmm. So they help to slow down that water and really uh, with that water slowing down, sediments and nutrients drop out. So it's part of the, uh, the plan for cleaning Lake Champlain and other water bodies is to try to restore wetlands where we can. Mm -hmm. Now as Jim highlighted, the NRCS is at the forefront of wetlands protection and restoration. We're going to take a few minutes now to see a video that was produced by the NRCS. It's a beautiful visual tour of wetlands across Vermont, so let's take a look. <laughs> These are really sites that really capture our attention and harbor things that you can't find elsewhere. It's really a critical part of our existence here. There are places that we can go and explore, places to go birding or to go hunting or to go fishing. They do so many things but make up such a small percentage of Vermont's landscape. Wetlands in, in Vermont only account for about 5% of the total landscape. The different types of wetlands that are dotted across the landscape really play an important role. And they can help handle different types of water that runs off of the surface when it comes to large storm events or flooding events, especially along riverways. Wetlands can play an important role in helping to be able to absorb water or even release water in times of dryness. As we see increases in pollution across our landscape, if we keep wetlands in place and intact, those are places that can help filter the water just by the different plants that are there. And yet right here we have a natural filtration plant. First of all, it takes the sediments out as the water comes down. But the other thing it does too is that essentially it takes out the toxins and a lot of the impurities in the water. Wetlands are also important for rare species, plants or animals. Some only live or really rely on wetland habitat. So there's special soils here, there are special plants here. So huge biodiversity and also highly productive. This is where things come to breed and to nest and to eat. And so we need wetlands dotted across our landscape here in Vermont in order to help protect that unique biodiversity that belongs here in wetlands. Wetlands are used by moose and bear and bobcats. Mink, otter, beaver, and muskrat are all dependent on wetland habitat. Wetlands are critical to some of Vermont's most sensitive species, such as amphibians like the blue-spotted salamander. Wetlands provide connectivity and travel routes that are used by many species of fish and wildlife to complete their life cycles. Wetlands also play an essential role in providing food and places to rest for migratory birds in the spring and the fall. Some people, you know, who, who may be hoping to maximize the amount of timber they have or perhaps maximize the amount of agricultural land, this might look like an impediment because it's not meeting their specific goals. 
But in terms of social goals and community goals, these things are really working for us. Wetlands do serve us people, but besides serving all the animals that live here and all the wildlife that live here, they actually serve a pretty good purpose to us too. From the educational uh, to the kind of the spiritual and the aesthetics. Historically, our country valued wetlands a lot as land that could be cleared, drained, and farmed. And some parts of our country have lost over 90% of their wetlands for farming activities between about 1780 and 1980. Here in Vermont, we've lost about 35% of our wetlands during that time period. But through our restoration programs and our conservation programs, we're trying to work with folks who are interested in restoring wetlands on their property. There is a financial incentive to being part of the program. The first thing we do uh, when we're trying to restore these is to deal with some of the topographical changes. We put back on the landscape what was there. Once you adjust the hydrology, you get the water back, it greens up to something that really looks like it was always a part of the landscape. The USDA, State of Vermont, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service partnership over the last five years has restored roughly 3,500 acres of wetland habitat. But that is still only 3% of the wetlands that have been historically lost. It is critical to maintain the wetland resources we currently have in Vermont and add to those wetland acres through restoration, conservation, and protection. The vast majority of land in the state is privately owned, and the landowners are the main reason many of these conservation programs are able to be successful. Now we're very happy that we restored the land and we're part of this project. The NRCS has been great to work with, um, very flexible. I know that this property is going to be and only get better going forward. They've planted over a thousand trees here, uh, many of which are nut bearing, which again will benefit the deer and the ducks. I find the, the wetlands to be one of the most special parts of the property. I think this is a really important step to restore the, the depth of the ecosystem, particularly here. So it's a lot of fun working with people who have those same values and that same vision for their land. And it's oftentimes farmers that we work with who have crop land for 30 or 40 years. They've come to a point where they understand the land and they want to bring it back to wetlands. We want to focus on some of these areas that really aren't very good. They're very marginal from an agricultural standpoint, but would have really significant wildlife habitat and water quality benefits by restoring that land. And we want to target those areas and work with those private landowners who want to voluntarily work with us to help achieve that shared vision of that habitat restoration. The USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service in Vermont can help you protect and restore wetlands. Contact your local NRCS office or visit the website vermont.nrcs.usda.gov. Jim, any final thoughts or words on wetlands or the National Wetlands Month? Yeah, I just want to talk about uh, the importance of wetlands and the kind of land that we're looking for in our wetland reserve easement program. Um, basically, it's, it's really marginal farmland. It isn't the, the great stuff that's growing fantastic crops that, that our farmers in Vermont need. It's really marginal land. They're fighting it every year. They've spent a lot of money you know, draining it and maintaining the, the drains and the ditches. And even with all that, there's oftentimes crop loss or really poor yields. And you know, we think that if folks who are interested and have that kind of land, if they're ready to stop fighting it and retire it out of farming, we'd love to work with them to restore those wetlands and to help improve the wildlife habitat and to get the flood water retention benefits and the pollution control benefits. And that, that land can stop being a burden for them and sometimes a real financial loss and can be really an asset for them and help them to connect with the wildlife on their land and to really help create a public good that everybody will benefit from. That's wonderful. Thanks for coming in for today. Thank you. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time on Across the Fence.